a video featuring my urban get home bag. A get home bag is a little bit different than a bug out bag. With a bug out bag, it's designed to get you from your home to a safer location during an emergency situation. A get home bag is the exact opposite. It's meant to get you from an unsafe location outside your home back home to safety. Generally, it's a little bit lighter than a bug out bag, and it also depends on how far away you're usually away from your home. For example, if you work 30 miles away from your home, your get home bag is going to be a lot more extensive than it is if you only work two miles from your home. So my get home bag is 25 pounds. I think that generally they should be less than 25 pounds. And so we're going to go through all the items of this get home bag specific for an urban situation. This is my urban get home bag. The actual backpack is a Swiss Gear SA1923 Scan Smart backpack. There's nothing too special about this backpack other than it was on sale on Amazon. But the main reason that I got it was that it blends in with almost every other backpack that you'll see in the downtown Seattle area. Basically almost all commuters are using one of these kind of Swiss gear backpacks, at least in my region. So I think it's best for a get home bag to blend in with your surroundings and just look inconspicuous. So it, I, also with get home bags, I think it's best to build them in bulk because you may have several get home bags uh, on compared to you may just have one bug out bag at your home. With a get home bag, you may want to have one in each of your vehicles, also underneath your uh, work desk, and uh, maybe even sort of an alternative location. So building them in bulk helps on save on costs as well as make a backpack that's easy replicated. So you can have them in multiple locations. There's a lot of information to cover in this video, so as always, I've created a PDF document that you could download in the description box below. Just click the link and it'll send you to the PDF where you could download it. It has a list of every single item that's included in this Urban Get Home bag. Even provides you with links where you could click the link and then it'll take you to where I actually purchased the items at. So, what I'm going to do for this video is just start going through all the various compartments of this backpack one by one. For some of the compartments, it's just a single item in there. For other ones, there's actually a module in there. They're all color coded based off of the results from the color of prepping video that I did earlier. So for the ones that have an actual module in there, we may break away and do a little tabletop of all the items for that particular module. So let's get started now with this video featuring the Urban Get Home Bag. There's not too much on the outside of this particular backpack. Again, I wanted it to blend in with my local environment, so I didn't want to have a bunch of items that are just hanging loose on it. There's just a few that you may notice. So on the side here, I have a very inexpensive flashlight. Uh, this flashlight is uh, the Lighting Ever Adjustable Focus Cree LED flashlight. It's around a $10 flashlight that you could get on Amazon. Uh, it's a, you know, very affordable, has high output. It just uses AAA batteries. And I already care EDC, a uh, high quality uh, flashlight, so I just wanted to have a backup to that just for a little redundancy. So just the flashlight on the back there. And then on the straps over here, you'll notice that I have a little bit of pepper spray for self-defense. So this is made by, this is the Sabre Red uh, pepper spray. It's the police strength. I just wanted to have it, you know, very easily accessible just right here in the shoulder straps. And that's all the items that I have on the outside. Now you may notice that I have some color tags here. Uh, these tags are not labeled, but they are color coordinated based off of the results from the color of prepping video that I did earlier. So let's just start off going through those particular ones. As you could guess by the color, this probably means water. So in both of the side pockets, all I have are a couple bottles of water. Uh, water is very important for survival situation. You can't go three days without water. So I wanted to make sure I had some physical water on me at all times that I didn't have to just immediately start having to gather water. So on the outside, I have just two one liter bottles of water. I have a few items in this top little compartment that you see here. So let's just open it up really quick. Uh, the first item, uh, this is an external charger for my cell phone. Uh, with smartphones nowadays, you want to make sure that you have them charged at all times. And with emergency backpacks, you want to make sure you have them charged for at least 72 hours. So this is a, a you know, well-made one. This is made by PowerAd. This is the PowerAd Pilot 2GS, 10,000 milliamp hours external battery. It's around $23, $24 on Amazon. So it's fairly inexpensive, especially for the, uh, the amount of uh, milliamp hours that you get. So you get uh, several charges worth on this. So it's very easy to use. Uh, it shows it has an indicator LEDs for the charge that it has left on it and everything. So uh, I have this in this uh, compartment. By the way, anything that you see in here that's electronic and it, if it doesn't look like it's in a plastic bag, don't worry. It is in a plastic bag. It's probably just the 10th take that I've been doing on this particular video. So I have some of the plastic bags here. Uh, the next item that I have here is just a little bit more illumination. I wanted to have a headlamp. This is a fairly inexpensive one. Uh, this is made by uh, Rayovac. It's the Rayovac DIY HL3 AAA B headlamp. So it has a fairly good output uh, for the cost. Uh, it's, you know, fairly reliable, highly rated. So uh, this is the Railvac. So let's continue on. I store most of my personal miscellaneous items in this bottom compartment that you see here. There's a few other items in here, so let's open it up. 
So as you see, I have it labeled with pink for personal miscellaneous, and there's a lot of goodies in here. Uh, let's see, I have a you know inexpensive whistle that's on a little lanyard here that you could take off. I have, a, as far as a communications item, uh, this is the Baofeng UV 5R ham radio. So it's a very inexpensive, around around $33, uh, yet it's highly rated. I have this for almost all of my emergency backpacks, so it's just very uh, cost effective for, and has a lot of functionality with it. So the Baofeng uh, ham radio. Uh, moving on next, a lot of these are free items actually. I have two pens and one Sharpie, and all of them were uh, donated either through work or going to a bank or anything like that. So I just you know, got a couple pens. So a few pens in there, have some gum. Uh, I find that when your uh, gum helps you relax, it helps keep your uh, morale up, and uh, when you're eating some bland foods, it helps with uh, keep your taste buds, taste buds alive. So let's uh, continue on. I have a little, this is uh, some nitrile gloves, uh, just in case in an immediate emergency I wanted to have them nearby, and it's just stored in an old prescription pill bottle. So some nitrile gloves just shoved in there. I have a few of them in there. Let's see. I have a chemical light stick, so a six inch version, buy it made by Be Ready. For a little bit of reading, I have, of course, the SAS Survival Guide, the pocket version. So this is, has so much information in it, it's, uh, you know, it's really great. So you should have this in all of your backpacks, I think. So SES Survival Guide. To go along with the pen, I have a Ride and Rain a notebook just to take some notes. See down in the bottom here, I have this as, for, as a form of entertainment and just information. Uh, this is a great little kit. I was recommended this uh, on YouTube. This is the Pro Knot. Uh, it just uh, provides you with all this information on how to do specific knots. And you can see there it's waterproof, the whole nine yards. And you know, when you're, you know, if I was wanting to buy time or just learn some information, uh, this is a great little tool to have. So as far as my, inter my entertainment goes, it's just the SAS Survival Guide and the Pro Knots little guide. So let's see, let's go on. The bottom here, I have some cash. So I have three dollars and quarters and I have twenty dollars cash. So I think there's a five in there and the rest are just one. So I wanted to have low denominations. And again, it's in pink for personal. So some cash, the cash could also be used for vending machines, for pay phones if you happen to find one, and things like that, and for barter if you want to see anything else down there. Uh, to go along with the pens and everything, this is a, it's a piece of a street chalk, so uh, it, if you wanted to write any kind of message to anyone, you could write that into the cement that you're, that you're at or just on the street corner, especially if you wanted to signal to someone or let, you, let anyone know of a route that you were taking, uh, you could use that, this for that. It's not permanent or anything, it'll wash away, uh, but it could provide uh, beneficial information to anyone that happens to see it. Let's see, and then last but not least, I have a little bit of a, a morale item in here. This is some um, Gentleman Jack. It's in a glass bottle, so it'll it'll last a long time. And uh, what I wanted to have this was for was for morale, also for bartering. Uh, basically, in stressful situations, oftentimes, uh, you know, having a little bit, a little swig of uh, booze will help out in those kind of situations. Even though it goes against everything that the SAS Survival Guide would probably say to, that you should do in an emergency situation. But if you watch movies like Predator and Titanic, they're always taking a swig of whiskey. So I wanted to have a little bit in there uh, just for morale, maybe even for a sleep aid. And those are all the items that I have in this little personal and miscellaneous compartment of the Urban Get Home Bag. Let's start going through all the items in the mid compartment that you see here. Uh, there's various modules included in here, as well as some individual items, so we'll just go one by one. We might break away for some tabletop reviews as well. So starting off here on the top, I have an emergency radio. This is made by Eaton. This is the Eaton Microlink FR160 emergency radio. It has weather band stations as well. It's a crank radio, so you're never going to have to worry about uh, the batteries running out on it or anything like that. It also has solar charging capabilities, although in Washington, I'm not really relying on that too much. It has a little backup flashlight. So the Eaton emergency radio. Moving on to the next item, uh, I, I wanted to have some items specific to my region, and especially in an urban environment. I, not only do I live in the Pacific Northwest where there's lots of volcanoes, I'm kind of worried a little bit about that, uh, but also it, when you're in the city, you know, you have to worry about uh, debris uh, from buildings or from uh, any other things like that. And I wanted to make sure that my eyes and lungs were protected. Also in a fire situation, if you're in a building, uh, you want to make sure that your lungs or eyes are protected as well. So I have, I, have a let's see this is a little mask over here this is made by uh let's see this is the 
P100 res respirator mask. Uh, it kind of looks like something you might see on Breaking Bad, uh, but it's a, a high quality respirator mask and I wanted to have a, you know, very good lung protection. And to go along with that, I wanted to also protect my eyes. And I, I like these particular safety goggles because if I need to, I could have them go over my glasses. These are made by UVEX. They're the UVEX S3970DF Stealth UTG safety goggles. So uh, these go hand in hand. And then also, with this uh, particular baggie, I also have some ear protection too, just in case anything's loud. So I'm kind of protecting all my facial senses. So my eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. So those are all those items in that particular bag. Continuing on, let's go down to the first aid. You probably see that right away. Uh, it's, I wanted to make sure I had a first aid kit that's bright red. This one's made by Adventure Medical Kits. This is the Adventure Medical Kits First Aid 2.0. I really like Adventure Medical Kits for you know pre-made first aid kits. If I'm not going to make it myself, for example, I'm doing a lot of these bags in bulk. Uh, I like just going with something that I know that's going to be very well made. So uh, this one has all the items that I want for uh, most emergencies. Uh, it has medications, ba med uh, bandages, and things like that. I also added a, a little. Uh, tourniquet in here. This is uh, the TK4 tourniquet. Uh, it's a very nice tourniquet. I don't want to open it up for this particular video because it's kind of a one-time use type thing, uh, but it's a well-made tourniquet uh, just to help with aid with a you know, blood stopping agent. So I have that just in this first aid kit. Also, you want to make sure that if you, that you have 72 hours worth of prescription medications too. So the Adventure Medical Kits, first aid 2.0. Next, let's start going through the items for cooking. Now in a get home bag, cooking isn't as important to me as it is in a bug out bag. All the items that I have in this particular backpack don't require any cooking, but I still want to have capabilities for boiling water. So this is a very, uh, it's a very nice cook set here. It's made by Stanley. It's uh, the Stanley Adventure Camp cook set. It has a nice little handle here uh, for boiling water. Also, if you wanted to cook, although I don't really have that requirement for my particular bug out bag. It also comes with some nice little cups here if you wanted to make some tea. So I just threw in a couple of tea bags. Uh, I like this particular brand made by Good Earth. It's uh, sweet and spicy. And it has just two little plastic cups that are included with it. So again, very inexpensive. Uh, this is less than $25. So the Stanley Adventure cook Camp Cook Set. And then also with the cooking compartment, I have a little module here. And I didn't want to go too fancy with a stove since it's not as important for this particular bag. So I have, uh, this is a SBIT ultralight folding pocket stove. It has the little SBIT tablets that you see here. I also have some tablets in the actual stove itself. So it just provides me with some uh, method of cooking, of boiling water. I have just one spoon, it's the REI camp spoon, $1. Uh, again, very inexpensive. And then I just have a military grade uh, can opener. So those are all the items for the cooking compartment. The next module in this particular section of the backpack is my tools module. It's labeled black. So let's take this on the tabletop and we'll start going through all the items included in this little tool bag. Here are all the items included in this little custom leather craft tool bag. Let's start here on the left. So I have some 8 inch straight scissors. These are made by Fiskars. Uh, these are the recycled kind. They're very inexpensive yet high quality. If you're familiar with Fiskars, you know that they make good scissors. I want to have these for uh, medical purposes, for cutting clothing, also basically cutting anything. Uh, I find that scissors are uh, you know, very handy for that. So uh, next, I, this is specific for an urban environment. This is a Jones Stevens four-way water key. I have this in all my urban kits. Uh, for You're probably familiar with this. When you go outside of a building, they don't have a normal, you know, water hose or anything where you turn a knob, they have that removed because they don't want people you know, stealing the water. So basically if in an emergency situation, this would be used for obtaining water from buildings. It has a four different sizes on there. I just include this with all my urban kits. So I highly recommend these, these uh, water keys. Uh, next I have some, a few little zip ties here. I find that I'm always using zip ties for repair purposes or for uh, various reasons. I also have a little plastic container with some nails and uh, just for, you know, possibly for shelter, for repair. Uh, I just wanted to have some nails with me. Uh, the next item here is a Leatherman multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Wingman. I already carry a, a multi-tool with me as part of my EDC, but I wanted to have one just in case for a backup. This is a very inexpensive one. It costs around $25 or so, but if you're familiar with Leatherman, you know they make high quality gear. It has all the normal stuff you'd expect from Leatherman. Uh, screwdriver, uh, can opener, knife, pliers, the whole nine yards. So the Leatherman Wingman. And then last, I have some 550 paracord. This is 50 feet of 550 paracord, and it's wrapped around a cool little device. This is made. This is the paracord spool tool made by 5COL Survival Supply. Uh, it you know keeps it nice and neat as you're wrapping it around. Even has a little container here that you could put a mini bic lighter here for you know sealing the edge of here. For, so burning the edge has a little razor blade here, so you could cut this without needing any kind of additional uh, cutting devices. And it keeps it nice and neat when it's in your bag uh, versus when you get it in the package, it just falls apart. So this is the uh, 
uh, some 550 paracord wrapped around the paracord spool tool. And those are all the items that I include in my tools module. Down here in the bottom of this particular section of the backpack, I have my fire module. It's labeled orange, so let's start going through all the items included in the fire kit. I have three methods of making fire for the fire module. So the first one is using a standard Bic lighter. Next I have some Koglin's waterproof matches. This is made by the Friendly Swede. This is the Friendly Swede Mag Magnesium Fire Starter. I also have some Tinder. I just have some flat cotton balls that you see here. This just happened to be what was in the bathroom. And then last I have some wet, a one wet fire fire starting tinder. And those are all the items included in the fire module. This top little pocket is usually meant for mp3 players or for radios or anything like that. Uh, but I include some batteries in here. So let me open them up. I have eight AAA batteries. Uh, all the items that are included in this kit home bag you can require AAA batteries. So that's all I really have. These ones are made by N-Loop. These are a nice uh, rechargeable battery. Uh, I have eight of them in here and so it would charge my headlamp as well as my flashlights. So eight N-Loop batteries. I have a few more tools in this particular section. Let's start grabbing them out. So this one's pretty fun. This one's made by Dead On Tools. This is the Dead On Annihilator Wrecking Bar, 14 inch version. This is pretty hardcore. I wanted to have this specific for an urban environment. I work in a, you know, in a building. There's multiple floors in the building. Uh, I just have a feeling that I might want to have some hardcore prying capabilities with a tool. So this has a lot of features on it. It has uh, various prying methods here. It even looks like a little hammer that you see here. Also, you could pry with that. Also, you could grab some boards with that, break anything. It also has little cutting capabilities here, especially if you sharpen it. So I wanted to have this with me for specific for an urban environment, uh, even though it has a little bit of extra weight to the backpack as a whole. Uh, this is a high quality uh, prying capability. So uh, the Dead On Tools Annihilator Wrecking Bar, 14 inch. Continuing on, in the bottom of this particular section, I have a fixed blade knife. This is made by Cold Steel. This is the Cold Steel Survival Knife. This is an inexpensive yet a high quality uh, fixed blade knife. It even has a, has a little magnesium fire starter that you see here. So a nice fixed blade knife over here. You could use it for you know cutting things for uh, various reasons. Uh, it's just good to have a fixed blade uh, for survival situations. It even has a hollow uh, handle here. So if you want to, you could store some cotton balls, some matches, anything like that. I don't have anyth anything in here uh, right now at the moment, but I'm sure that I'll uh, trick it out Rambo style. So this is the cold steel survival knife, fixed blade. And then the last little tool that you might see here in the bottom, uh, this is just a little shovel. This is made by uh, Koglins. It's the Koglins Backpackers Trowel. So uh, this is could be used for sanitation, but I have this included to use with uh, you know digging up geo, not geocaches, but survival caches. So I just want to have some kind of shovel capabilities. It's lightweight, very inexpensive, and this is for particular is for digging up any kind of survival caches that you may have on the route from your work to home. So just a little shovel. I have a few hygiene items in the little netted area of this particular backpack, so let me just open it up really quick. It's labeled hygiene, as you see here. So I have some Sawyer sunscreen. This is SPF 50. So just on the few, the rare case that it might be sunny in Washington, I want to make sure that uh, you know properly protected. Also, if I happen, there happens to be bugs out, it's always nice to have some bug spray. So this is Repel 100 insect repellent. It protects for up to 10 hours. Uh, this is good stuff. So. And then last but not least, uh, to go along with sanitation, I just have a little uh, portable toilet paper. So some toilet paper for sanitation. And those are all the items that I include in this little netted hygiene compartment. Those are all the items that I include in this mid compartment of the backpack. So now let's open up the rear compartment and go through all the items over there. This video is starting to get a little bit long, so let's take a quick little pause before continuing on with part two in which we'll go through all the modules that are included in the rear compartment of the Urban Get Home Bag. I hope that you guys are enjoying watching this video so far. Be sure that you download the PDF document that's included in the description box below that has a list of all the items that we've covered in this video as well as the part two video. So please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section. And again, I hope that you guys are enjoying watching this video featuring the Urban Get Home Bag. See ya.